Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the D3 Media Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Benson, and I'm joined by my co-host, Brandon, and we're also joined by James and Kamran. Hi, guys. Hello. Hey, everybody. how's it doing? Surviving. Yeah, we're, uh, I don't that was directed you. towards me. Yeah. <laughs> it's not always about you, Brandon, but... Uh... I know. <laughs> um, so, first off, I would just like to apologize for the bad audio quality and my last uh, episode, Who's the Best Batman? Uh, I noticed that the a friend of mine pointed out that the audio syncing was off. So for all three people who watched it, I'm sorry. And I will make sure that I never, ever, ever make that kind of mistake ever again. Ever. Finally, my complaints went through on the comment section. <laughs> I know. I guess I was inundated with complaints, and I was told multiple times to go kill myself. So, ah, uh, now yeah. that's so, no good. His so fans are very be, hardcore. Uh, will you be appeasing your fans then? I'll I'll consider it. No. I'm gonna get so many like letters now, just be like, "Don't kill yourself, Danny." <laughs> I love you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> So DC Fandom is going to be this Friday, and are you guys excited? Oh, I'm, I'm intimidated. And I, I meant by Friday, I meant Saturday. Yes. Saturday I don't know how to feel about it in the midst of everything going on, honestly. Right. And when you say that, do you mean uh, the layoffs or just the situation of everything in general? Combination of both, honestly. Right. I mean, if, you really, if we're being honest here, like... It's the layoffs and just kind of with everything going on in the world and how media is kind of going through this weird phase. It's not the most assuring situation to just be like, all right, time to announce everything, guys. Right. Yeah, that's a fair point. And and I think that brings us to our first thing is uh, the DC layoffs. Like, how does, like, what timing for DC? Like, they ax half the company and while they're announcing all this stuff, like how does that really affect uh, DC fandom going into it with knowing that? Brandon uh, or Conrad, whoever wants to start. I don't know. Yeah, Brandon, you go first. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, the way I see it is just kind of, they seem to put more work on a lot of people that they think can handle a lot of work. At least, like, ha- giving certain individuals more than one job. And demoting and some. Demoting some. And it all comes down to making money, right? So it's a combination of getting rid of people they feel like are just kind of being dragged along for the ride and giving all these responsibilities to people in other positions and just kind of making them work harder so that they can save more money in the long run but still get the same amount of results, you know? Why have a certain amount of people supporting DC Universe when you could just fire them and then just give that responsibility to like one or two people that are working on HBO Max? You know, that's how it comes off to me, ultimately. And I think DC, or not DC, but Warner Brothers or even AT&T at this point, since they're the like parent company, they're just kind of like, let's show off all these announcements and not really within these announcements talk about the layoffs, but you know, not hide the layoffs from the public. Just let it be known that it's happening, but all this other cool stuff is going on. So I, that's how I kind of take it overall. It's like, let's soften the blow by announcing everything from Wonder Woman to Batman and let's cancel a bunch of stuff on the publication line, but still announce that certain books are coming out and not going anywhere. And you know, creative teams are still working hard, even though we got rid of like two thirds of them. <laughs> so that's just my take, though. Yeah, I find it a little, I don't know, odd because I honestly don't know that much about these uh, layoffs. Like the last I remember talking about DC with Comron on our podcast, Sutra Side Talk, was that, like you said, AT&T was considering maybe selling them off because they're just dc is not making them that much money or maybe i'm misunderstanding why they were considering that but when that piece of news came up on our show i was honestly stunned because i was it seems unfathomable unfathomable to me that dc could actually be in trouble at all it's been around my entire life and i was just like wait 
DC Comics, it might be in trouble. I can't, I can't, I literally can't believe that. And it is odd that if it is in trouble right now, that they still continue doing this DC fandom and make it seem like, oh, nothing, nothing's wrong. Everything's fine. Nothing wrong here. Life is going on. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing wrong here. We're all fine. We're fine here. Everything's like fine. The, the big grin with like the, the small tear coming out. Yeah, of basically. Right now. Yes. We're alive. <laughs> Don't hurt me. Yeah. <laughs> Don't hurt me. Uh, but yeah, no, I totally see it that way. Uh, how do you feel about it, Cameron? Yeah, so um, I've always been a really big uh, AT&T fanboy. I'm actually switching to AT&T <laughs> now. I'm leaving Verizon. I'm so excited for everything they have to offer. But no, not really. Fuck that. All right, so, uh, but like, honestly, it's weird because before we just knew, oh, DC fandom is coming. And it's something to be excited for in the current state of everything where we've been inside pretty much for months now. And uh, there's no sign of things leaving us, at least in our current state. And it was just like, okay, cool. This is awesome. And before the pandemic uh, had started, I remember Brandon, you showing me like uh, the whole potential uh, fate of DC Comics. And I was worried beyond belief because uh, when it comes to comics, at least specifically, uh, I'm very much big on DC, Marvel. I'm more like just specifically with like X-Men and stuff, but DC, I'm kind of more grand around it. But uh, now with everything going on, it seemed like that was in the back round. Now I completely forgot about it. And all of a sudden these layoffs come right before this event is about to happen. And I don't know which was going to be coming first or which one was being incubated first, whether it was fandom or whether it was these layoffs. I, I definitely feel like it is coming from like AT&T going, how can we save money uh, to a point where like there was even news of potentially they were going to sell off Warner brothers interactive, like the game studios. We wouldn't have rock city, nether realm, uh, WB Montreal. We wouldn't have like uh, well, the guys that make Batman Arkham and injustice and things like that. Right. It wasn't that they were going to get rid of them. There was a speculation that they were going to sell the rights to them. So there was yeah. that rumor for a bit that Xbox could buy them. And yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it'd be like a Spider-Man uh, situation, but with Xbox. Yeah. I guess word. the best the best example would be uh, when Disney bought Lucasfilm and Star Wars. They laid off LucasArts and then they licensed Star Wars to EA. It would be like that. Yeah. Where yeah. potentially they would most likely at first try to sell the studios. Afterwards, if it didn't sell, they would ax them and then potentially just license the rest of their stuff and for sure make money. But it's definitely like that those pools of talent that have made honestly like each one of those studios I can say wonderful things about because I haven't gotten a bad game from them really and uh minus like the Batmobile stuff in Arkham Knight but uh <laughs> yeah it's, it's not that bad in retrospect I, it, it's just tedious with the other stuff but uh with all this still coming up I guess part of me is still really excited just because there hasn't been anything really to look forward to and I was just honestly expecting like, oh, we're going to get like, at least movie wise, maybe like uh, next year and that's it. And it's like going all the way through like 2022. And then we got like big news today, at least like uh, in terms of the Batman and the Flash uh, with more Batman. And we're just getting right. a lot of Batman. But uh, like all that stuff. And at the same time, though, with the editorial things, because it's like each thing feels almost kind of separate where it's like movie stuff you're excited for, comic stuff you're worried about game stuff you're like you don't know how to feel yet because you're like will they won't they will they won't they and uh then at the same time when now with tv with a dc universe and hbo max it's it's super super weird where they're all trying to do all these different things at once and it's kind of honestly like it almost feels like politics where you see one thing and you're about to get angry but then you're distracted with something else so you then forget about that immediate thing because there's so many things happening at once Right. That makes sense. And yeah. you know, what the what eight it sounds like AT and T is doing is the same thing that uh that Disney does when they buy a company, like Comron was saying, it's like they did this with Foxes. They bought Fox and then they laid off most of Fox's staff and double the workload of whoever they kept behind to save money. And that's really what it sounds like AT and T is doing. And there was rumors for a while that AT and T was just gonna spin DC off into its own company. 
which and they keep like the rights to all the characters so that way for like the movies and the video games and dc would strictly be dc comics which would be they wouldn't last a six months oh no like uh yeah. there was this rumor i read online that was floating around that AT&T being the parent company, of course, uh, right. they just have no desire to be in the scene of comics or Not the publication. At all. Like if they lose money, apparently, I don't know if they actually do, but oh yeah, all no, know, I don't think DC's <clears throat> DC or Marvel has broken even in a long time. Yeah, they keep it around because they know for that fan base, and it's also a, like a pool of ideas for Hollywood. Yeah, so, pretty much there's this whole idea that they're just trying so hard to like get rid of it and just like make it stop. But the only way they can make that happen is it like making it a financial flop essentially. Right. And that's a good point too, is that like, really, if you look at how much the comics mirror the movies now, when in terms of costumes and stories and everything, they really are just, they're writing to give the movie writers ideas. I feel like at this point. Yeah, it seems like a lot with a lot of the films nowadays, they're not even pulling from older stories anymore. It's just the stories uh, that came out like two years ago. Basically, uh, especially yeah. with Marvel, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, the, uh, you pick, you bring up Marvel. That was what I was going to say. Like Marvel's been doing that recently too. They started to literally kill the X-Men off in the comics because, oh, we can't make X-Men movies. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, Fox still owns the rights to that. So you know, the Inhumans are basically like mutants. That was such a just pathetic attempt. Yes, yeah, <laughs> we saw how that went. Yeah. They straight up just killed them off in the comics and went, no one even yeah. cares. Yeah. And no one I did. mean, uh, uh, oddly enough, it, it, was a good, uh, it was a good arc and story that was pretty crazy, but they still killed them off. Yeah. And what's sad to me is that I actually, I started reading that Inhumans comic and I was like, man, the Inhumans are actually pretty interesting characters. But oh, yeah. you really yeah. shouldn't be killing the X-Men off to make them the new de facto x-men i know and then you look at the mcu's given up on the inhumans too like they've just mm -hmm. they tried to make them the new x-men yeah they tried to make them the new x-men and then now they got the rights to the x-men so it's like all right the inhumans are just the out the door which is They're what a waste gone. of those yeah. characters too you know yeah it's, you see yeah, like they don't uh, even talk about them anymore yeah and it's like you see the way they ended ultimate the ultimate universe and the way they're ending the inhumans mm -hmm. they just went they dropped everything and you just see in one hand is miles morales and the other hand is kamala khan and they're just like all right we'll just take these but then just kill kill the rest yeah uh, just keep the iconics and put them put them in with the the current figure state. out some way to put squ a spider going in right forever <laughs> yeah so yeah so it looks like dc is kind of a mess um so you know, and there's still, I know Brandon wanted to talk about uh, how much they just love Jim Lee. Oh, my God. Well, he's the best artist. You need to stop right now. No, I was going to say. <laughs> that's uh, debate. That's debatable. Yeah. But, like, I okay, let's just say <laughs> great artist. He is. Like, there's no doubt that he is a really good artist. Brandon, we got to be fair here. This is he's, video, Brandon. We can see your I face. know. You can see my reaction. <laughs> I don't a, hate him. I just think, and I will, I'm, I, th I will say on record, I think his X-Men stuff is really cool. I haven't read it all, but I've seen okay. it. Okay. Unpopular opinion about all those artists from that, like all the image artists, like Jim Lee, uh, Rob Liefeld, Todd McFarlane, Mark Silvestri, and all them. They're all like, they're good artists and everything. They, all their art look the same to me i don't know man rob liefeld uh made yes, <laughs> okay he things, got worse uh, yeah, he got worse yeah, that's yeah, how he differentiated that's... himself he got worse but jim lee i think he got better but all his like 90s x-men stuff or his 80s x-men stuff whenever era he did that in like it's just him mcfarland all those guys i love their art but to me they all look the same yeah but uh I was gonna say it to, as a jump off point. So like thinking of like the Inhumans, uh, so, like they're bas they're gone. Like I was saying earlier, they're literally right. gone. They don't exist. They're out of the picture. And I feel like I know it's a weird comparison, but it's this thing that mirrors the entertainment industry, where uh, you know this is what's selling, so this is what we're gonna push. That's why there's so many Spider-Man books because Spider-Man movies make money. That's why there's so many Batman books because by like. Batman makes money. Right. And then there's the rumors yeah. that this is going to be all renamed Batman in the DC universe. Yeah. We'll I, get to I that, think that's but... still a, I, I think that's still a pretty funny joke. That's also hopefully just a joke. If that, that was real. Yeah. But that's, no. <laughs> to me, I'm done with DC if they do that. But 
what I was getting at is kind of like, yeah, this whole Batman thing before going into Jim Lee. But um, basically, it's like, okay, Batman sells, right? Right. So we're going to keep pushing Batman books. Hawkman isn't selling, so we, we're going to ax his book. You know, it's just... Would that be the best way to put it? Yeah, they're getting rid of it, you know? Yeah. They're, they're Lesser characters of... that aren't as... The, yeah. the characters that don't make every kid on the street go, wow, Batman! The B-list characters, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. I'm still furious that they set the Suicide Squad movie in... It was Midway City, right? Is it? Yeah, no Midway it. City, yeah. yeah. You know, isn't that where they patrol? Hawkman and Hawkgirl? I think so. Like, yeah. why did they not even just, like, have someone mention them? That whole movie just could have, you could have been, I, I forgot what I was going to say. The plot for that movie should have been, <laughs> oh, uh, a mother box lands in Midway City and they could have sent the Suicide Squad to go pick up the mother box. Yeah, oh they, my God, they that would have been so much better. Stuff. Yeah, also, get them against uh, parademons and everything. That would have been so much better than the plot we got. I want to say also well, the reason probably we didn't get Hawkman and Hawkgirl was because at that time they were in the uh, CW world at that moment. Oh, like actually, for the most part, yeah. they were keeping them separate. They weren't going into the multiverse stuff yet. The only right. one they were like, oh, we'll do both was Flash. And he was like the only one. DC mm-hmm. is notoriously hard to work with when it comes to their character rights. That's why like the old Superman movies, the Christopher Reeve movies could only use Lex Luthor and General Zod. I never understood huh. that, especially like yeah. um, I was actually watching a bunch of static shot clips and uh, they were showing some retro hero that they were like, yeah, it was going to be a Black Lightning, but they couldn't get the rights, so they made up some, like, cool, funky guy. Right. And uh, I was like, w- but don't they just own... How do they not have the rights to their own thing? I don't understand that, that right. at all. That's why Birds of Prey was supposed to be a Gotham City Sirens movie, which was supposed to star Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn, and Catwoman. But they had to change it to Birds of Prey because they're using Catwoman in the new Batman movie. So it's like they're really weird the way they work with their rights, with their like what characters can be where and everything. It's it's really strange. And which is strange too, because they have all their characters, unlike Marvel. Yeah. I'm so confused now. What? Yeah. yeah. I mean that's still I guess when it gets that that deep into the movies, James, it's still like the idea of the, the massive DC special that they True. still employed. Anyways, back to Jim Lee. This all comes oh, yeah, back to yeah. Jim Lee. But he did say, um, what was it that Jim Lee did say? Uh, but actually, like, it, it, about the comics, like, he was saying, like, he did emphasize on, like, the comics aren't going anywhere. We're here because also they need us for the movie plot lines and scripts and everything else. And uh, one thing I did notice, too, was they kept saying comics weren't going anywhere. And they kept asking, like, what format? And they're like, you know, we're not going to kill comic book stores. But they didn't really reinforce that they're like we're here for them blah 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 it seems like obviously we we've seen a lot more digital content from them and it seems like that's the way they're going to be pushing more towards anyway uh and potentially i guess more trade central right and i was going to ask you guys that is have you heard much about like what are they doing with individual issues are they moving away from that and going towards just trades so they didn't say that. Um, so far, the only thing they've said was we're lowering our lineup by 20, 25%, which is why we've seen like September, uh, October, November, we're like seeing a bunch of cuts. Like first it started with what, like uh, Shazam and a couple others. And yeah, we're seeing like Hawkman, even like uh, Bendis stuff, like Young Justice is uh, heading out too now to that point. I wasn't even, yeah. I was not expecting young justice of all the books apparently that was at the bottom i'm like dude it's young Ju- how is that not so what's going on no. but i uh, i'm assuming at least for now because the whole thing everyone was expecting was all these big issues are culminating to like the, the 100s the 50s the 75s they're all hitting those big milestones especially with like batman and you're thinking either they're gonna do that potential leaked uh what was the generation zero or not leaked but like playing generation zero they're gonna do and then that apparently got axed, or that's what we've been led to believe. And now we're getting, I, we see like a solicitation, and it says Batman 101, James Tinian. And it looks like they're still doing single issues, but uh, depending on, I actually, since I haven't honestly been able to check and see, I already knew the, the movie and some of the TV show panels, but I don't know what comic book panels there are going to be for this. 
so I don't necessarily know if they're going to even talk about like, hey, we're changing the format. Uh, because when something like that would happen, they would definitely, like, you'd have Jim Lee up there skewing it as, like, we want to give the best product to our people, uh, so we're doing it and we're changing it to this style, blah, 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 even though you know, like, ooh, that's going to screw with the stores, that's going to screw with everything else, but they're making right. it like it's a cool, a, a, a good thing that's happening, so I, it's, it's hard to say. I think comic book stores can survive off of doing trades because like other, I think other companies like image and all that, they can survive off of doing individual issues and trades. But I think that the individual issue thing is just killing DC and Marvel. So, Oh yeah. I mean, we've already talked about that in the past before. Yeah. Like the issue with no pun intended, honestly, but like the issue with variants and number ones and, Mini series, limited series, max series, ongoing books that go from like issue one to like 200 and then they decide to stop it and then start from one again. And then, you know, how do you sell a number 40 versus a number one issue and yeah. all that stuff? So, right. And, yeah. you know, it's, uh, I, I think a lot of the problems, like I've mentioned before, too, one series per character. No character needs two or three series going on at the same well, time. That's what uh, I remember what I was going to say now was that that's what I was talking about is like, you know, it's kind of this weird thing where everything's mirroring each other. It's almost like each character is getting fired from their series or let go from their series as the teams are getting fired as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. like there's I could probably tell you off the top of my head, there's the Batman series, there's Detective Comics, there's... Uh, all the stuff with death metal going on right now, which is a bat centered book, obviously. Of course. And, you know, at a time in the past, you had stuff like Batman and Superman and Trinity and, you know, justice league books where Batman is sometimes like the lead of the book at the moment. And then on the other hand, you have Hawkman who's been canceled like a gazillion times at this point. And it's just like, again, it's more of, Firing these characters, giving you know, firing the teams or discontinuing them, giving the characters the axe. I mean, it's happened in history many times before. I mean, Flash wasn't Barry Allen for like twenty years. It's just kind of like you know, That's he didn't true, have a yeah. series, so it's kind of like you know, giving these characters the axe and then history repeating itself, where they you know whatever is selling. And I have no doubts that when the Flash movie comes out, there will be Flash books that are getting pushed forward, like five of them probably. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's just what's selling and what sell what makes money is big blockbuster movies. And so because of that, I mean, this is all stuff we all know, of course, you know, it's, if that's, what's going to sell, that's what they're going to push. And the only people that are going to get those jobs are the people that have already worked on those books or are currently working on those books. Like for Batman, I wouldn't be surprised if they brought back, Scott Snyder or James Tinney in the fourth or Grant Morrison just to like push out a book when the Batman comes out. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they won't. But you know, it's getting but to the point will. where like those people that what'd you say? I said, but they will. Yeah. It's the people, it's those names as well that make the money that they're going to keep. And then everyone else, they just kind of get rid of in some shape or form. Okay. So again, it's like the teams are getting fired and the characters are getting fired because you know, they don't got stories going on. I mean, that's in comics. So I think that that was a big problem for a long time is too many cooks in the kitchen. So if they tighten up the continuity and have a, you know, get a better grip on things, it, it could be good. You know, the mass layoffs and everything. Okay. That sounds horrible. I've, <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> you know, but, all the people who just lost their job during a pandemic, that could be a good thing, you know, for us. <laughs> Oh yeah, Danny, you I was the have first the one to ship this. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, I think like when it comes down to it, what do the customers really want to? Is like at the same time, like I guess at the same time, like some of these books weren't selling. Uh, for me personally, like uh, when I go to buy a book, uh, I have been very specific nowadays. Like before, 
uh, when I first started, I remember I was like, oh, I'm buying everything in the Bat family. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you and showed then me I was, your list. It was huge. Yeah, yeah. You show, uh, we've compared lists. And yeah, I've was, talked the, the about lists have been, <laughs> they've gone up and down. They've changed over time. But in the beginning, it was anything that was Batman. And the first time that I kind of was hit with like, a, do I really want everything Batman was like David Finch's Dark Knight book. And I was like, hmm, I don't like this. Yeah, but then Batman, should I still keep buying it? And it was like uh, I finally started refining what I wanted, and now it's gotten to that point where there are specific characters I'll follow, but more like their mainline flagship book. Like Batman is in like twenty different things. I don't read Justice League, even though he's in it. I I don't read Batman and the Outsiders, which is really just Black Lightning and the Outsiders, but they put Batman's name on it because that would sell more. Uh, so I don't like do those ones, but I'll do like those mainline ones, and then I'll follow like. Oh, Scott Snyder's writing whatever. I'll just follow whatever he does because I'm more interested in his writing at this point and him than necessarily like the characters depending on it. Like uh, I think the biggest uh, change of that was like uh, Nightwing where I would, uh, he was one of my favorite heroes and I would get every single thing for Nightwing. And then all of a sudden they started doing all this weird stuff. The Rick Grayson stuff came in in it and uh, I stopped going for it. And at this point, too, like you're dealing with people that are moving to the digital age and not really. It's like, oh, I'm running out of room myself with comic books. I don't know where to put them all at this point. Uh, and I'm kind of trying to figure that out. And you have to wonder, like, I guess for the graphic novels and these issues, like, how are they going to do this? Because is it going to be only the big heroes, the big ones that sell, get these single issues still? And they still go, yeah, there's still going to be a Batman 101 a superman 20 whatever and like wonder woman and stuff like that detective and action uh because they'll still want to bank on those heroes but i guess for the others are they going to end the other teams and stuff are they just going to be like oh instead of doing a mini series here's this graphic novel we're going to have instead of doing uh this 24 issue run of hawkman we're going to do this uh this two volume trade and stuff like that like you have to wonder exactly how this is going to be because is it going to be we're just axing these heroes completely and they'll be in the background sometimes in events or the background in a team book and that's the extent of the um area they're going to be in and for these writers and artists like what exactly are they going to do uh because at the same time too you say like oh they'll bring back scott snyder for batman uh which at the same time it's like oh that would maybe makes sense or something but uh, you also have scott snyder going i'm really I, I need a break leave me alone uh just let me finish death metal and then i'm doing all my indie stuff like i'm done he's even right. doing like a kickstarter now for a new book huh. and uh other people like i don't even know what the hell grant morrison's doing now like i have no idea actually now he works I think on a that. heavy metal uh comic magazine or oh he does is, is it comic or magazine oh well he's working on like heavy a, metal it's like a illustrated oh. magazine i guess uh um, well he's the like main publisher or editor-in-chief something like that i, don't I was gonna that. say too this is the most i've ever heard anybody ever talk about hawkman he is my example for like a lot so of he's things a big hero yeah he's the been there he's been there since the beginning i know literally he like, has all the thanagarians so <laughs> all the thanagarians have the potential to be really really cool under good writers the only thing the only time i ever thought that they did the uh, Thanagarians justice was in the justice league cartoons. Mm, yeah, I would agree. I think, I, I think what it happens now is like at, at this point, um, would you say I would ever buy vision, Mr. Miracle, Adam strange books? No. Oh, Tom King is writing. Him? Oh I'll, yeah. Whatever he's writing. I'll, I'll get it. Why not? I, I think like anytime it's a hero, that's not uh, a big name. They could take a big name hero and put whoever on it and it'll probably sell most likely. Obviously, if you put someone big on that big hero, it'll do even better. But you could take those big writers and they could just do that sometimes and then go, hey, I want to write this nobody. And they'll go, sure, okay. Uh, All yeah. of a sudden you'll see that start to sell. And that might be the only... I'm wondering, would that be now the only way we'll see some of those heroes now? Right. Go ahead, Brandon. I was going to say, you got to consider a lot of other people on the other side of things, though. Like, take James, for instance. He likes these characters, but he's not religiously reading comics like some of us are. Mm -hmm. And so he doesn't, you got to, I'm not going to say I have the answer, but like, you got to think of it this way. You may say Tom King, Scott Snyder, any Grant Morrison. 
I know who you're talking about. James will most likely not know what you're talking about. I know maybe like two of those names, but yeah, yeah but I'm as, one of those people. I'm really bad with names. <laughs> yeah, and you know, you got to think of it like this though. It's just there's people that know even less. So yeah. imagine being someone who's less like less knowledgeable on the topic than James and you walk into a comic shop and you go, "Oh, they got a a fourth world special anniversary issue written by Grant Morrison." First of all, you're not going to know if you're if I if I'm assuming here, James may not know who created the fourth world, why there's an anniversary and you know i don't even know what the all fourth the, world is who created it and you know well let me tell you <laughs> well, it would be i mean and, I, I feel like the person that would re- look at that would also be like so which hero is grant morrison yeah and then and then on top of that know who grant morrison is and then imagine if they put liam sharp as the artist do you think they're even going to know who liam sharp is and on top of that the colorist the letter they're going to look at that book and be lost out of their mind that if someone I was going to say, if someone like us walks up to it, we would go, oh, my God, there's an anniversary for Jack Kirby's 105th birthday to do a fourth world thing because he's the one that created it. And Grant Morrison is like the defining writer to Batman. And Liam Sharp did an amazing job on Green Lantern. Hell, yeah, I'm going to read this. Yeah. We may get that reaction, but James won't or someone who knows even less won't. And I think this is the thing that's kind of hard and – DC, unfortunately, and a lot of comic publishers, Marvel included, have pushed themselves in this corner where how do you sell this book, even if you put a big name on it, even if you do a grand event, how do you sell this to the common audience? And that, go ahead, Brandon. Sorry. I I was going to say, and that's just, and that's my little rant on the subject is just like, you know, this is why they keep pushing these big characters and putting characters like Hawkman to the side or any other character like that, because at the end of the day, it's what makes the big dollar. Right. And, you know, I've, I think that the way to handle all the, the B-list characters like Hawkman, like Mr. Miracle and everything is that, you know, not everybody needs an ongoing series. So just like I think the big ones, the moneymakers, they get like the main Justice League members and all that. They get their own ongoing series. And then like, you know, for like Fourth World, just a, fir- a Fourth World comic. You know, that's it. Like a storyline in the fourth world that involves all the major characters. And then if you want to take like a character like Hawkman, you'd be like, okay, I have an idea for a story. You do that story, that arc, and it comes out maybe monthly. And then it gets a trade after it gets, after all the issues get released. But it doesn't need an ongoing, you know, one thing after another, just like a condensed, those characters are just good in like a little condensed side story. You know, and honestly, the movies, the MCU has kind of handled that situation a lot better, you know, like giving ant like characters like Ant-Man, they have a much smaller scale movie as compared to somebody like Captain America or something. Yeah. I liked it. It's just a guy in house arrest. That's like, you can't catch me. (laughs) Right. You know, (laughs) it works. That works way better than, you know, not everybody needs a big, you know, grandiose, uh, uh, series and everything and then now that they're coming out with trades and everything I think that if they're going to move mainly to trades I think that that's a way better uh, that's a, a good opportunity to make better stories on these side characters that are more condensed and more just you know and another thing actually have time to work on them not like get number one out and then like two years later release the next issue like with doomsday clock are you saying you also don't like J.J. Abrams' Spider-Man book? I, Did that uh, even come yeah, out? I have no uh, idea. It's like halfway done. I can't remember. It's been like months. I feel like it's been like I couldn't months. tell you, dude. <laughs> it, it comes down to <laughs> making it appealing to the general audience and marketing properly. That's all it is, really. And to make it appealing to the general audience, you have to make stuff digestible. Yeah. And I think that's the way to go and not having everything be an ongoing series all the time. Yeah. And that's, it seems like it's worked. I mean, like at least like when they do the big names, like when you see Tom King on stuff like those, those are just maxi series They're 12 issues and then it's over. And then that runs done and they go, what can I do next? An actual arc that wraps up before you start the next one. You know, and we, we've talked about this stuff so many times and everything. So I think, uh, is there anything else you guys want to say before we move on? 
Well, with the, with the layoffs, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if they're going to shut down. We don't know if they're going to pump out just Batman in the DC universe and have like 15 million Batman books. And I love Batman, of course. And I, I, it's just like, I don't need, you know, it's, I went through the same problem with Star Wars comics. It's a different beast in itself. I will but, shit you know, a brick if they do that. Like, I <laughs> love the Star Wars books, but it became so much to, like, juggle financially and to keep right. track of. And that same fatigue is going to happen with Batman. It already does. Yeah, I know. I, like, I'm already, like, as someone who, like, Brandon, you're the only person I know besides myself that loves Batman. Like, he's, like, part of my everything since I was little. Like, he's just yeah, in my Yeah, because nobody likes Batman. No, no one else likes that. But, I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> I know. But, uh, <laughs> like, I like the reason i got back into comics was oh batman died and i read it in a game informer magazine and then nightwing is becoming batman and i that's when i jumped in and i just started reading all the bat stuff but when i look at it now i'm just kind of i'm tired because it's also like i i've had a great time with scott snyder's run i've had a great time with tom king's run and at the same time like there were what three or four other books at the two. There was like Batman and Robin, which was also fantastic. Don't get me wrong. Like I had Tomasi and Gleason. That was amazing. But now it's like all that's over and they're still kind of churning stuff out. And what's coming out feels kind of more of the same a little bit, but slightly different. You're just like, Hey, look, it's Joker again. He's going to do something big like you did the last two times, but yep. whatever. And Everyone that's has to an do Octavian. their Joker story. Yeah. Honestly, they should just, lines here. They should just do the the Joker plot from the Adam West series where he turns the town, the uh, Gotham City's water supply into jelly. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, and it's did, like it's like that thing where he's in the mainline stuff, and I don't care about that. But at the same time, like I'm interested more in like three Jokers because that's something they've been teasing for like four or five years back when I was fully like in peak interest of everything still. And again, and, they've taken four years to get yeah, it done know. i'm like jeff johns i get it jeff like johns keeps this, doing a, like a million things he's like managing movies and stuff but it's like i don't know so and i i don't want them to oversaturate this kind of thing because then i'm like am i getting these because they're good or am i getting these because it's batman and i've already gone through the if it's good or not and i've like gotten rid of some and I just want, like, if I'm good with just one good book, and I know, like, it's always been, like, let's say Batman and Detective Comics. I loved it when it was, like, oh, look, it's Detective Comics starring Batwoman. And right. it's uh, Batman's Batman or something like that. And I'm fine with, like, having two separate ones. But also, it does get annoying because it just seems like no one cares what's going on. I get the whole thing of like, we're just trying to make good stories, but also we're trying to make a cohesive universe. And it's like, well, but pick one. I mean, like I get you want to do both, but you're not really, you're not doing both. I, I feel like I'm reading like three different timelines in the same timeline. Mm -hmm. And I'm just kind of like, I, I'm so, I don't, I don't even know what's happening. Like it, it makes them contradict each other to right. a point where it's like is it worth your time is it if it's supposed to be that important why isn't it impacting these other ones or why is it like it's able to still have this going on at the same time and i always like in, a, in any argument i always say the easy one he's batman and stuff but like in this case it doesn't really it doesn't yeah. work that way well that's that's why i've always said the detective comics should be saved for the batman family batman oh, and all easy. of his sidekicks yeah they, they had that's it a down. group comic they had it down at the beginning of Rebirth, where it was like everyone else was there. Oh, and that was fantastic! Yeah, yeah was... and Batwoman was like in charge of the team. And Wasn't that it... also Tinian? Yeah, that was Tinian, yeah, which was, I'm confused. Yeah. Yeah. And they also <laughs> used, yeah, and they also used that. Uh, it's it's a little bit of going off on a tangent now, but they used that for the crossovers to include other characters because there's that arc where Zatanna got involved. Yeah, yeah. and that's true. Yeah, so I just think, I don't know, we keep complaining, but, you know, we're not going to help the problem if we keep buying single issues. I know, yeah, we're, part of the pro we're part of the problem, guys. And but, real quick, because we mentioned Three Jokers, before we move on, I, I want to ask you guys, what do you guys think? Of, I, I think that this, this happened in New 52. I don't remember if it happened in Rebirth at all or if it's still a thing, but I think Scott Snyder wrote in his story that the Joker was like, they pulled a Pennywise and said that, like, the Joker's just always been part of Gotham. Yes, yeah, yeah. so that was uh, mm -hmm. that was Batman Endgame. That was yeah. the last arc before Jim Gordon took over as Batman in New yeah. 52. Uh, that was like late in his run. But the whole thing, you literally have Jim Gordon going through and looking through pictures of like throughout time. 
I don't know, throughout the history of Gotham, and he looks in the background and you just see Joker there, and then he appears under his bed, which is like a callback to some other another previous arc too. But which honestly was done really well. But uh, it did make you question everything. Like now I'm even more confused. But it's also like, is it the Joker just screwing but, everyone? But they said killing joke is still canon. Yes. This is so stupid. And so is I mean, so is death of the family. So it gets very. It gets very confusing and like uh, uh, of like, well, the whole thing, when you see that and it shows that past stuff, you still don't know if Joker is screwing with everyone or not. Because right. he could have done something where he, if he's hiding under Jim Gordon's bed, he could have easily gone through random places if he wanted to and been like, let me just put like, I don't know, we could Photoshop something. He's Joker. He always does something wacky to the point where other villains and heroes are like, don't say his name out loud. He's going to stew. So you're going to be screwed. Like he'll True. find you where he lives and stuff. And uh, you still, I don't think at the end of it, I don't think you know if that's true or not. You just know, like there's stuff that'll bring them both back to life at the end. And mm. um, it, the only other thing that can kind of bring up that point of like, Oh, would he be around that long is the three jokers book. Cause then you're like, well, what, what does that mean for you jokers like what what you Again, still haven't explained it let's just point out how confusing those this must be for someone like james i know <laughs> oh, I'm, yeah. I'm looking at james's face and i'm just like he's, Poor just like, james. he's just sitting here like there's three jokers <laughs> well like i that i was aware of the whole like batman became the god of knowledge or whatever he, for, he like, had the mobius chair he was like the mobius chair and he like was like what? so like I remember hearing about that years ago and thinking like that's interesting. I wonder how they'll <laughs> well, finish cool. that up. <laughs> but yeah, the whole Pennywise clown thing that is also interesting. But I'm just like how yeah how does all this fit together? What it forget, makes did no you sense. ever did you ever get that far, James? Because uh, no, this is one of the reasons why every time I think about getting back into reading like Batman or even Spider Man, which is like not a DC. Uh, thing but whatever like there's so much history that i need to catch up on for anything to make sense or so it seems anyway well Hence that's what, why it's they got to figure out what to do well before mm. um james if i remember correctly because i was honestly the one that was pushing you all the time after like i'd talked to you for two hours basically giving you the entire history of like an event but like yeah. uh which i'm still sorry for um i remember you were only reading like two books and it was Snyder's Batman. And it was, um, at least at the time, uh, you were still on Flash Thompson's Venom. And, yeah. Uh, or Flash Thompson as Venom. I don't remember who was writing it or not. Or like which, like which portion you were at, if it was like Space Venom or whatever Venom. Uh, but uh, I, I remember you falling off just like, you just kind of fell off. and then I it fell was... off when they tried to put him in Guardians of the Galaxy. And I was literally, literally just like, well... I've never read Guardians of the Galaxy. Where do I come in? And like, what issue did he start in? I don't, like, I was so lost. And I literally just, I couldn't find it. So I was just like, whatever. <laughs> I'll just start up again when any Brock has been him again. And then um, for, I forget, would you stop with Snyder's Batman? Honestly, like I started reading batman again when new 52 started it back up at like one and i was like oh cool yeah. i can i could just start up from from scratch little and, did you know <laughs> yeah and uh, i got i know i definitely got past the court of owls storyline which that was like really really the, the really. first that was like the first, the first arc and i was like year. wow this is oh, really boy. cool and then i for whatever reason i just stopped reading again i don't know <laughs> it gets expensive man that's the other thing there was a moment where just just spider-man like spider-man has like a similar problem that batman has where it's like it's not just batman anymore there's spider-man there's miles morales spider-man oh, there's Spider -Man's the worst the ghost actually. spider mm -hmm. there's spider woman uh they did like a spider-verse mini series for for a bit and then there's venom and his whole, whole thing so in spider-man alone is like four bucks a comic it, twice a month so that's an yeah. that's eight bucks a month for just one of those Spider-Man comics. So just I was like, twice a month is ridiculous. Like yeah. two issues a month is unbelievable. I hated it when they started. I was like, I kind of liked it with Tom King specifically for Batman, just because I was in that like, just give me more, more, more. But yeah. like uh, for everything else, I I despised having the basically if it was like, oh, it's uh, twice a 
twice a month, uh, but it's only two ninety nine. And then they were like, now it's three ninety nine. You're like, oh my god! Yeah. I have that poster from DC that says drawing the line, line at two ninety nine, and they said <laughs> that they would never go above two ninety nine. And those sons of bitches lied. That I like, have what, that, that poster here in my room. What did that That's last funny. like two three years or something? I feel like uh, yeah. it, didn't last too, it didn't last too long, but. Uh, it's gotten to that point now, like, uh, there's a whole, that's a whole another history of Spider-Man, but, like, it's at that point where even with Batman and Superman combined, I think without even a second thought, I could easily say, yeah, there's more Spider-Man comics than both of those heroes combined at this point, because out of any hero that is completely oversaturated to the point where it's disgusting, it is definitely Spider-Man. Yeah, because I think for- Brandon's right. It's like, oh, well, Spider-Man's selling. Let's make a bunch of spider-man comics it's, yeah. spi- it's spider-man batman and deadpool those two just take oh, over I don't, everything that's easy though i never liked deadpool to begin with so i never had to jump into him i just <laughs> don't gotta him. worry about that yeah i was like it's just like the movie i was like do i need to watch this not really and i yes. like, watched it eventually and i was like oh, this is really good like do you like the character now no nah, i still don't give i, I could give two dams about this character i only liked him in Un- uncanny x-force that's about it but uh yeah with spider-man like i think I tried to get into it I, because I, I love the 90s TV show. Like that was, it was the same time as the animated series. So like when I think back to my original heroes, I was like, yeah, it's Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, Batman Beyond, Static Shock, and the Justice League. And I'm like, yeah, it's all those guys. Not Iron Man, yeah. he sucked. And he's getting heart attacks all the time or something stupid. And uh, I like that old, that old Iron Man cartoon. I, I just, I literally just remember him going like, oh, my heart. And War Machine's like, hey, buddy, I'm going to help you out. Oh, wait, I'm not the main character. I got defeated. And <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. was like all i remember but um uh like eventually all these different things evolved but those were like my heroes and uh spider-man uh, i wanted to get into him when i was finally get. i was more into dc comics and i was trying to check out the marvel stuff and uh i was getting into dan slots spider-man i think i picked maybe the worst time i jumped in during spider island and <laughs> i was like oh, yeah. I have no idea what's happening. And I was just reading Spider Island, but mm-hmm. I think I started reading some of the tie-ins. And ironically, I got a character that I wanted everything from Spider-Man, but it wasn't Spider-Man. It was Scarlet Spider. It was like a, a Kane. Right, there's another one. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that was the weird thing. Cause I was, it's that point where, yeah, I just want the neighborhood Spider-Man doing his thing. Also my friend showed me Straczynski's run. And I was like, I looked at that and I was like, wow, I was really, you know, his, his life is changing. He's growing. He's becoming like a teacher. He's actually doing all this adult stuff. And then I just see the everything for like Spider Island and Dance Lot and the art and stuff. And I'm like, why is Spider-Man 12 again? I don't know what's happening. Why is the, the cops naked and she's a spider? Uh, J. Jonah Jameson's the spider and he's eating the other spider and everyone's like having spider sex. I don't know what's happening. And, <laughs> and I tried to stick with it. But I didn't get it, and I didn't like it. And I was just like, I'm just going to read this Christopher Yost Scarlet Spider book because it's just its own little thing. And it worked because... It's weird because it worked like Spider-Man should have worked for me instead of me looking at it and going, like, I have a headache. Spider-Man's just giving me a fat headache right now. I think one of my biggest issues is that so frequently I'll try to read just one or two comics. Like, I'll try to read just spider-man from marvel just batman from dc because those are my probably two favorite heroes in all the comic books and i never feel like i'm getting the full story if i'm just reading either one of those like for spider-man he's constantly crossing over with other characters and you mentioned spider island i remember reading venom's spider island stuff specifically because that was when i was trying to read the uh, flash thompson spider-man or uh, venom stuff and it gets to like the huge epic conclusion with the queen spider thing in like i don't know uh central park or something like that and then iron fist comes out of nowhere and there's like a little blurb in the the corner that's like if you want to know why iron fist is here read like iron fist issues like this through that and i was like but i don't i don't even read iron Iron fist so to understand why he fits into this story i gotta read a whole other thing and the same deal with uh batman Uh, so welcome to comics yeah Mm -hmm. so i guess at a certain point i was just like well if i'm not getting the whole story why should i even bother with any of the story i guess you want us to make this easy for you yes please that's that's why like um it's funny too like as much as the one thing I've always despised with at least DC stuff is always because mainly I, I read it more so I can attest to it more is like 
uh I have like three Batman books where I have the three Batman books and I'm like confused to like which one is supposed to be the one that's important and they make it all contradictory and stuff. And some of their tie-ins are a little too much, but they're not that bad in terms of tie-ins because at least because they keep canceling books, it's never that bad. Um, like, like look at Dark Knight's Metal. I think it's like a good pacing where their tie-ins are just one shots and then that's about it. They're not like doing some crazy thing or anything else. And then I look over and it's like, hey, look, it's the Marvel event. And you have every single book is part of this event. And I remember my dealer telling me, he's like, yeah, and you have Fantastic Four Empire. And then there's also the book that's called Empire Fantastic Four. And I was like, that's a good one. And he goes, no, it's real. And I was like, oh, that's terrible and it's like i that's the one thing like that's also what's personally kept me away from a lot of the marvel stuff is like they're just like come on buy every single book you know you want to dude one of the worst examples of that was fear itself oh that dude that's uh like, oh god i tried to read that one too that i was, tried to uh, read the okay, iron yeah. man arc specifically because i was like man i haven't read iron man in a while i'll i'll see what iron man's doing in fear itself and again it was like read three or four other comics to understand the full storyline and it was like I literally just already left the comic store. I'm not going back now. I'll, I'll figure it out later. Okay, yeah, sorry, guys. We're going off topic. Yeah, I have to stop you there because we're talking sorry. about we're talking about Marvel fear itself on the DC thing, and you know, I think well, let's just all uh, let's just all just take a second just to acknowledge comics suck. Yeah, but I keep they're it. great. Yeah, oh yeah, no, 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 no. It's like an addiction. Yeah, yeah it actually. Yeah, oh, yeah huh? I think it's the closest yeah. thing I got to. Work. So moving on, let's uh actually talk about dc fandom and what are you guys excited for so i think we'll uh we'll start with brandon and we'll just work our way around actually we'll start with me because yeah. i'm the host and i haven't gotten to talk god damn it i'm just kidding but uh i just wanted to yell about something uh, you just want to yell i know i just want to be heard um god i forgot what i was gonna say um oh you're you're excited fandom about excited. spider-man at fan- <laughs> fandom Oh yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, you think Spider Man is going to be at DC fandom, guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I mean, he's already everywhere else. So yeah, I hear okay. Miles is the new Aqualad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, the thing I want to talk about first is, God damn it, son of a bitch, we are not getting a new Superman game. We are getting Superman in a Suicide Squad game, which is complete horseshit, and my life has been ruined yet again. My life's over. So yeah, <laughs> the new Suicide Squad game. It, uh, I'm hope it's good. Um, we've been teased with the Suicide Squad game since uh, Arkham Origins, and yeah, uh, yeah like I said, I, I hope it's a lot of fun, and I hope that the new Batman Court of Owls games isn't an, in the Arkhamverse. Like I hope none of these games are in the Arkhamverse. I hope that it's like kind of like a reboot to the to everything and like they because i didn't like the way arkham knight ended and i didn't like how off the rails the arkham universe kind of went so i'm hoping that we get something that's kind of like um yeah like their own video game like a, a dc video game universe where like you know we have a new batman game we have a new uh suicide squad game and then we could eventually branch out into a bigger universe because like we're overdue for like uh a wonder woman hack and slash god of war style game mm, yeah well, that could be really good so um i'm excited for that um i'm excited to see about the uh what's it called the the batman game or the batman movie because it's supposed to be based off of long halloween and borrow a lot from that like a go straight detective film noir story and I'm not a huge fan of the suit for what I've seen so far, but I'm really, cause like I, they were teased that uh, we were supposed to get the original like Neil Adams suit with the long horns and the blue and the, the ovals, the yellow symbol. So got my horns long. Yeah. Oh yeah. I got mine too. So um, anyways, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited for that movie and I'm kind of disappointed that Ben Affleck is coming back because now it's just going to confuse everything even more. And that, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm looking forward to because like the rest of the stuff about the movies and the comics just depresses me. 
Like, I'm not – I'm so sick of the Snyder Cut and Zack Snyder fans. So, yeah, I see you smiling, Comron. You'll have your day. So oh, no, there's anyways, one in the room. Yeah, yeah it's good. Yeah. I get to go last. It'll be perfect. Oh, yeah. No, I'm going to make sure you go last and then cut you off. Oh, no. All right. He's going to edit you out and everything. Yeah. So, anyway, Brandon, what are you excited for? Honestly? Uh, the Montreal Mont- – the DC Montreal uh, game that's coming out, which is the um, – that's supposed to be the Court of Owls based game. Yeah. That is literally like the only thing I'm looking forward to. Yeah. There's because not much surprisingly I, that has I, me excited. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm excited to see, like we've already seen like a bunch of clips for Wonder Woman 1984 and it's, it looks awesome and it looks like it's going to be exciting. I just, it's just like, I feel like you can only tease so much because they keep pushing back when the movie's supposed to come out. Right. Um, that's why I'm but, saving my reviews and all the Wonder Woman videos I had planned for like next year. <laughs> but uh, you know, Arkham Origins was a dope game. I I really like that game. I really like that campaign. I think that is a studio that was obviously like a test for them, and that is a studio that seems to be able to handle the Batman IP when it comes to the Arkham series or any Batman game at this point. And I'm excited to see what they're gonna do with Quarter Owl stuff. If that's really where they're like headed. And I think that could be really awesome, and I'm excited to see that. And I'm excited for the Rocksteady one, the whole Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. I'm just more curious, and I know they're going to show something, hopefully, how it's going to play. Is it going to be, like, just Suicide Squad characters or just Justice League characters or a mixture? Is it, like, a team-based game where you, like, switch off or maybe even co-op? So I'm excited to see just kind of how it goes down because we know it's going to be fun to play, plain and simple. Like, Rocksteady has proven to be a pretty – good developer and i think the i think it could it could be promising uh with that said i was looking at the schedule and you know it's the typical stuff like the snyder cut and you know i'm interested to look at like the legacy of the bat panel um there's just so much batman shit yeah I'm it's just really so much batman. yeah and, that's it that's all there is and uh, I like watching interview stuff and like kind of like question like questionnaires. So there's like the Ask Harley Quinn thing, which um, and let me see. Yeah, if you like the animated series, I'm reading the description. This is something you can't miss. It's just it's only like ten minutes long, apparently. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'll check that out. And the uh, there's a 80th celebration for Wonder Woman, so I'm curious to see what that is. Um, and then the B A W S E females of color within the DC universe. They're just kind of having a bunch of actresses sit down and just talk about like their characters and their roles and all that. And, you know, like I said, I like watching stuff like that just to get like a, a better perspective on like the people involved. And I'm just curious to see what they're going to say and like talk about what it's been like being these characters and all that. So that's kind of my list for fan dome. And then, of course, Jim Lee. Don't get me started on Jim Lee, uh, okay? Yeah. I'm tired of him. I've just said that, yes. I'm not going to sit here and say he's terrible, but I'm over it. He's Let it out, Brandon. The... We're on, this is the perfect time. Let it out, Brandon. Let's Jim Lee is it. not the perfect artist for DC. He, I don't know why they keep making him do all the specials. That Action Comics 1000 was not good. I mean, Dustin Nguyen's the perfect artist for DC. That's just me. But, like, and again, I'm not going to sit here and bash him, but I just don't know why he's always, like, the guy that's the lead for the comic stuff. I'm like, there's better artists. Like The, the artists that they've had on Superman lately. Is since, it Jorge Jimenez? Yeah. Yeah, and he's, he's like, the best modern-day Superman artist. Uh, excellent. Like, yeah. they've had so – they really knocked it out of the part with the artwork that they've had on uh, Superman. And do you – Greg Capullo on Batman, he's he's good, but I don't know. Like his artwork doesn't blow me away like it does to some people. I would I say it's, he's become the standard issue now. Not necessarily, not in a bad way. Um, no. I d- I definitely see Capullo's Batman as like the dominant Batman now in a good way. I just don't see it in the most special of ways. Like I, I always love seeing like 
you see like his eye, when you see him like draw Bruce's eyes. I don't know why, but it always sticks out to me more than other uh, takes normally on him. But right. that's just me personally. I think Brandon also is just excited to see John Romita Jr. more than anything, more than Jim Lee is definitely John Romita Jr. I'm not going to sit here and complain about artists more than I already have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have I'm gonna arrange to have Jim Lee on this on this podcast as well as uh, John Romita Jr. And they're just gonna destroy my career and never let me have a chance at anything. Right. So <laughs> anyway, James, what are you looking forward to for Fandom? So I feel like I'm like one of the people who's the problem in why the comics are dying because I'm super excited for the movies and super excited for the video games, but I like. Like we talked about earlier, I don't really know most of the names of the people who like actually write or do the artwork. So the the panels with the individual people don't really speak to me personally, although I would be interested to give them a try just to see if I could get into liking this artist or this writer as a person. Because uh, honestly, I, I've always been really bad at doing that where like I'll like a, pro, uh, a piece of art, but not really look into who makes that art or whatever. And I should be better about that. But yeah, I, even though we've seen stuff from uh, Wonder Woman 1984 already, there's still other stuff I'd like to know about it. I am dying to know what Kristen Wiig looks like as Cheetah because I feel <laughs> yeah. like that's going to make her They're break probably the going to show that. So I'm very excited to see if it looks super cheesy or actually good. I've seen leaked images, but they're not great. So I mm. have like mixed feelings about it because Cheetah is a cool character. Yeah. If, you, if you get it right you can say uh, that about any character true true uh, i see there's a suicide squad panel i'm a little bit interested in that just because that's that's the movie that's coming out i believe yes right. the suicide squad with uh, yeah james gunn directing uh you are right there's a bunch of uh, batman stuff yeah there's was, was like, like one five i want to say and I, I really hope that the only reason Ben Affleck is coming back is to like so they give him a proper farewell as his Batman and like Flash resets the timeline in his movie and Robert Pattinson's Batman becomes the new that, Batman of that universe. Yeah, that was the thing that when I heard that news earlier today that they're bringing back uh, Ben Affleck for as for at least the Flash movie, I was like, well, do you think that they're going to bring him in literally just for that one scene that they already set up in Batman v Superman where the Flash travels back in time and he's like, I think so. Bruce, it's Lois. Which he's still kidding. is confusing. I think they're going to do more. That wasn't even yeah. Ezra Miller. That was, <laughs> so, that was so stupid by the way they did that because they're just like, I felt bad for everybody who, everybody in the theater was so confused and started asking questions during that scene. They're like, who is that the Flash? Like, why is he already be- coming back in time? Like, what does this mean? Uh, I feel like that, that was that, me in the theater, but more like, what does it mean? I know who it is. I, I mean, I, it, it's, yeah, it's, I thought that was a really cool idea to set up stuff down the line. But yeah, for like the average person, they'd probably be like, why is this happening? And then even worse for me, it was that Bruce like wakes up from another dream thing. And I was a like, dream within a dream was, within a dream. Was that a dream sequence? Does that happen? Uh, anyway, God, I hate ever. that movie. <laughs> but the best dream sequence so, ever. I feel Jesus. like they're. They're probably just going to bring back uh, uh, Ben Affleck for just that one scene because that's not asking too much, I don't think. I, I want him to have a proper farewell. Like, I think he deserves that because he was such a good Batman. Yeah. So, anyways, skipping past. Oh, is there. Do you have more uh, so, basically, uh, long story short, I'm excited to see the movie panels and I'm very excited to see the video game panels. Because I know I'm probably going to want to play every one of those games. Right. Uh, I, I would be interested to see if you are correct, Comron, that Ed Boon being there is because they're doing going to do an Injustice 3. Because I that series is really cool. I don't even play Good fighting games that often because I'm just not that good at them. But I still like those games for their story. Uh, I'm just really confused that, or at least it's interesting to me, that the Suicide Squad game was teased in the wb montreal game and so wb montreal is the one making the new batman game that everyone expected rocksteady to be doing and rocksteady is doing the justice Le- i'm sorry the suicide squad game that everyone thought that wb montreal might have done i don't know i think that's a little bit awkward but still very interested to see what all those are about that's true i didn't think about that but Anyways, moving on past uh, Comron. He doesn't deserve to speak about this. <laughs> Snyder fanboy. 
All right, fine. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kamran. How much can I say? Oh God, we <laughs> haven't said enough already. <laughs> oh, right. Jesus. Uh, I'll try to. I'll try to keep it to the highlights. Like I, I'm definitely easily um, most interested in because I don't know. Like there, there still isn't that. I haven't been able to really look through them, but I don't know how much is actually related to comics in there. Obviously, I really there's do, not much. Yeah, I want to yeah, know. It's I'm, kind of shocking. I, yeah, that's why I was hoping we'd get something that's very specific of like, what's next for DC Comics? Like, that's really not uh, uh, what's next for Batman. What's next for like the line of these characters? But what's next? What's your, what are you doing? Like your layoffs are happening. What, what's going on next? Which I do feel like they now started a second event in September. There's a second DC fandom now, uh, so I'm wondering if maybe that'll be there or something. But obviously, anything really that seems like overall comics related for sure. Uh, then you have the games. I'm definitely interested in Suicide Squad kills the Justice League just because I'm like, I'm, I'm assuming Justice League becomes uh, the villains because of either one Starro or two Eclipso or something like that. And the Suicide Squad is sent in because they're like, they're the ones who can deal with them. Uh, and definitely Court of Owls because those are probably one of my two favorite villains in terms of comics nowadays. And uh, of course, Injustice 3, uh, ironically, I just play the fighting games for the story. Mortal Kombat and Injustice, I actually don't play online. I'm just like, I just want to know the story. Oh, it's done. All right, bye. But uh, more so for sure, uh, just because I've become kind of infatuated with them, uh, is the DC movies for sure. Uh, easily Snyder Cut. I am highly, highly, it's probably one of the two biggest things now, or one of the three biggest things now, I'm looking forward to is really seeing it. I've been one of the biggest, uh, at least out of us, I'm easily the biggest proponent of the Snyder Cut. It's been in my hashtag on my Twitter account, like in my bio, since that hashtag started, and it's still there. I'll probably leave it there until the movie comes out. And uh, I've been really excited to see what the differences are. Do I think the movie is going to be fantastic? I honestly don't know. But I just really, I, I, I believe, guys. I believe, and I clap my hands because I believe. But uh that and before today i didn't even know this was going to happen but yeah the announcement that ben affleck is going to be batman again i was so i like for me personally i know people would definitely disagree with me for it but the snyder the cut of snyder's justice or snyder's dc world uh was probably what i consider the biggest uh tragedy in film is just not getting more of that and the world he was creating because for opinions aside, like he had a very clear vision that got whittled down and watered down by studio execs and whatnot. Uh, so I'm really excited to see more of like his vision come back again, even if it isn't necessarily part of the mainland canon anymore. Uh, and of course now we saw new, um, new images and like posters and like logos for the Batman. And it looks absolutely uh amazing so i would say those three for sure um which i guess is pretty either snyder or bat oriented but uh the other movies as well easily but definitely those the tv shows not as much but that's because i've been kind of dropping off them piece by piece right and uh yeah the the tv shows i i'm kind of done with superhero tv shows like the I really do want to watch like the Daredevil and Punisher and all that over at Marvel, but DC like Arrow was really good for the first couple seasons. So was Flash, but I mean, there's just so many of them now. It's it's really hard to keep up with, and I'm I'm really excited to to see something about the new Suicide Squad movie. And it's interesting because James Gunn did say that the new Batman movie is going to be in the same universe as his new Suicide Squad movie, so whatever that means. I think that we've gone far too long without really knowing anything about the new Flash movie, what they're going to do with that, and which is perfect for DC. They have the perfect reboot tool. It's just the Flash. Yeah, and I do want to say, like, uh, if you want to know, because I, Danny, I was very much in the CW DC world in terms of the shows. Like, I was uh trying to watch every single one of them. Uh, and one by one, I was falling off of them, then jumped back on for Crisis, yeah. and then jumped off again for some. But uh, in our 51st episode, I want to say, I actually do a full deep dive on like how I feel, and like piece by piece, I've fallen off to a point where like um, 
the way I see a good superhero show working out easily is definitely like the Netflix Marvel format where it was like shorter seasons that weren't um, so bloated. And, and had, a, had a, just a, a decent arc. Yeah. And the, the shows like DC Universe, like those are like actually also not bloated and they're just like, yeah, it's like 10 episodes or something. And it's like, oh, that's not bad. Th- keep in mind, of course, I haven't watched like Titans uh, or Swamp Thing yet, but um, at least from where everything else I've seen, like it's been pretty great honestly so i got to see the first episode of doom patrol and i actually i actually want to watch that show yeah that that that's that surprisingly that's entertaining good. yeah so yeah brendan fraser's comeback yeah, um comeback so yeah i could respect that with the snyder cut thing i get that a lot of people just want to see the the story that he set up get wrapped up and everything and you know it's like i don't want it to be bad but it's just I got hyped up for I got hyped up for Man of Steel and Batman v Superman so much, and it was just such a blow to my childhood. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, my god! I mean, what a kick in the face! And it was just, and it it sucked too because I remember all my friends that I went to go see the movie with Batman v Superman. They spent the whole like we were like outside for like four hours outside the movie theater talking, and they were just like explain everything to us Uh, yeah i mean you can't sit there and just throw all this information into the movie and be and expect everybody to know it so i don't know i i'm just so sick of hearing about it (laughs) and it's not it's not even snyder's movies that like get me mad it's like it's the fans that are just like well you're just too dumb to understand his movies (laughs) the greatness that you're witnessing and that's the only reason I tolerate Comron is because he's not like that. Well, actually, Danny, I was hoping you'd take an IQ <laughs> test for me to really see if I can prove my point. But no, like, I, God, I, it's weird because I have stayed away from the negative side of all the Snyder stuff. I always just like talking about the positive stuff because- Stay off enough, the DC like, cinematic Reddit. Oh, I don't go on think I uh, stay away from Reddit, but like- uh, <laughs> I just always talk about the good stuff. Um, and I do yeah. have my problems with some of the parts, uh, depending on each movie, depending. Um, but like, it, it's funny, like a lot of people don't like Man of Steel. And I'm like, that's probably what I consider one of the top tier. I don't know if there's maybe one or two other comic book movies in general that might be better than that. Yeah, I love the original Superman movies. Uh, but Man of Steel, I really enjoyed, if I'm going to be I, honest. I have tried so 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 hard to like that movie because i really like henry cavill i like the whole cast and i'm just like i was ready for a modern superman movie but i just it lacked confidence for me because i feel like Zack snyder's movies like the whole dc thing that he did feels like the difference between that and like the mcu to me is just like they lack confidence like deep it feels like Zack Snyder felt like he had to go in and fix Superman and fix everything to make it so that everybody can like them. And, you know, you don't need to sit there and change Superman into Batman to make people like him. And Agreed. I, I, I just really, couldn't stand Jonathan Kent. <laughs> I, that's another one I, I'll easily argue with you on that one, but that's another story. <laughs> I know. Um, uh, God, I just... Why do we got to keep seeing Jonathan Kent die? I want to see Pa Kent live for once. Do something different. Well, my problem is like, so in the original movies, he dies of a heart attack. Right. And it's sad okay. because it's, it's one of the few things that Clark couldn't stop. Right. It really, like, it grounds him. It, it gives him the idea that like, you know, always be a good person, but sometimes you just won't win or whatever. Like, I don't know, but for me, like the whole thing that they tried to do for Jonathan Kent in Man of Steel was like he gets sucked up in a tornado. Yes. Like Clark could have run <laughs> yes. there and back so <laughs> fast that like he could have literally caught him in the tornado and brought him back and no one would have been the wiser or I know. whatever. It's and, a, I don't know. And, uh, and the, also the scene where he's like, well, what was I supposed to let all those kids die? He's like, I don't know, son, maybe. Like, no, 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 no. Jonathan Kent should have never, ever said Jonathan that. Jonathan would have never have said that. And that's the thing. I think Superman would – I get that what they were going, like the world's so negative nowadays, they wouldn't accept somebody like Superman. And that's what, like, makes him the way he is. But I feel like Wisecrack talked about this, that Superman would 
reject the world around him because that's and say no we can do better than this and you know that's what that's why he inspires hope and i i don't know i feel like they really dropped the ball on that and it's sad because there's a lot of certain scenes in man of steel and bvs that are really really good that i mm-hmm. love like the scene where superman saves that girl from the fire in mexico and all the day of the mm-hmm. dead people's like bow down to him amazing scene but the garbage you have to to sift through to get to that scene is just ridiculous and i know so i know a lot of people love these movies i just i look at the script and everything and then plus you don't feel the love in them either because david goyer wrote man of steel he hates superman and chris tarot <laughs> wrote bvs also says that he doesn't like superman why are you getting people that made it clear before hiring them that they don't like these characters yeah it sounds like a bad idea it's I. It's, yeah, like I mean, that's where I, that's where I can easily uh, come in and defend it, and I just feel like I um, know. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to take the time either. But uh, well, it's, we'll, it's we'll, about, we'll do we'll do an episode dedicated to well, it. Well, that's why um, I always wanted to. Uh, I just say it real fast, like uh, not really necessarily to Snyder's stuff, but in general for the DC movies, just because that whole thing. It's if I would I wouldn't consider Snyder's stuff a trash pile or the movies themselves. Easily the opposite for me, but. Uh, in terms of the DC movies in general, in terms of the direction they tried to go to in the beginning to where they are now, it was kind of a whole garbage fire. And there's so many, they announced more movies than they would actually even put out to a point where you don't even know where some of them are, which was actually why I talk about it on our podcast so many times, but I've been planning on building uh, basically a big DC special where we go through um, all the past movies and then get to the current stuff. Like basically I'd want to time it around the release of one of the current releases. Uh, before it was like originally I wanted to do it around Birds of Prey. Uh, then it was Wonder Woman just because I didn't have time. Like life is busy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'd imagine it would be either during maybe Wonder Woman or potentially one of the 2021 movies. But, uh, mm-hmm. Ideally Suicide Squad or Batman. But I wanted to go through and talk about what they've done so far. How it's gone or how it's confusing to what's going on right now to where did what happened to every single movie that was announced and find out is it is it canned is it in development hell is it dead who's on it is it still in the works and basically go through that entire thing so i've actually i'm like i've been building on that and that for some reason is like my biggest uh personal uh podcast project i've been wanting to do and for sure i'm gonna have like for sure i'd want you guys on it and stuff but uh, that, I'm down. I, yeah. I remember, like, they announced, like, DC announced, like, 20 movies, something ridiculous, because, like, Marvel was spewing out all their release dates, and then DC was just like, okay, here's everything we're doing, like, the next day. We we're supposed to get Man of Steel 2, Green Lantern Corpse, and then... Cyborg. Yeah, a Cyborg movie. We we're supposed to get The Flash. We we're supposed to get a Green Lantern, Green Arrow movie. We were supposed to get uh, Jared Leto Joker, Harley Quinn and Jared Leto Joker. Yeah, and um, the Batman that which was supposed to be a Ben Affleck's like Arkham Asylum movie and everything. Batgirl, we were Nightwing, to... Gotham City Sirens. Yeah, Joss Whedon um, was supposed to be doing a Batgirl movie. I forgot yeah, so about that. There's all yes, exactly. That's why I'm like I I've yeah. been wanting to do oh this God. special for so long, and it's gotten so big now. I'm like, all right, there's gonna be basically I'm gonna have to figure out the past movies because that discussion alone because they're already out there's so much to talk about really for some that i feel like they're almost practically standalones but then the whole future portion it's a whole thing like it's its own it's its own beast that i'm trying to create there but yeah well is there anything else you guys want to talk about from dc fandom or you think you've covered it's a weird it's a weird situation where it's a lot of batman announcements and then everything else is kind of like all right (laughs) We're going to say this is being worked on. Um, All I got to say from DC fandom is I don't hate Jim Lee. But you I just, do. You're just, it's, it's just, it's your, just his, like, as a person in his direction, you're fine with it. It's just specifically, yeah. you just don't like his art style. That's it. Right. His art style. That goes for I, me with Zack Snyder too. I don't hate him as a person. I think that's terrible what happened to his yeah, daughter. I, think, I just oh, don't yeah. like his filmmaking. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say like with Jim Lee, it's just like I got nothing against him. I I follow him on social media, and like 
you know, he's a nice guy. He does cool stuff and he seems like a really humble person. It's just like, I don't know why he's always the one to be like comics art when like, there's so many other artists we could talk about. I think it's just cause he's in charge. Yeah. It's just, you know, I, I got nothing I against his position. He gives himself a lot of jobs. Yeah. I, I got nothing against his position either. I just think there needs to be more room for other artists out there and you know, kind of like Danny's point with like Zack Snyder. It's like he's a he's a cool guy. He can make good films, and you know, him as a person, he he seems like a chill person. And you know what I mean? I could tell like, he loves comics. Yeah, and it's just like, but I feel like you know, if we're going to use that as another example, there could be other directors out there too. You know, yeah. and it's just all and this it, money. Really, it is the time. same situation because Snyder got to oversee the whole DC universe, like. There are other people that could have done that to me way better. Yeah. So nothing, seriously, nothing against them as people with fandom coming out and like having them at like the forefront. It's just like, I think there's other people that could be doing that stuff as well. But, you know, that's, I just, that's just me though, you know. But yeah, I take from fandom, you know, I'm excited to see some game stuff and the Batman but I, I just wish there's other stuff going on. And I think it's honestly not the best timing with all the layoffs and all that. I just It just feels awkward. Right. Their public relations department sucks. <laughs> they really do. <laughs> yeah. So, James, Cameron, anything else you want to add before we wrap yeah, things I, up? I guess it's like a ca- more casual uh, comic book fan. I'm, like I said earlier, really excited for more movie news, more video game news. But I do agree with Brandon. It's with the what sounds like a massive amount of company restructuring and layoffs and stuff. It just feels like a weird time to be doing this. Yeah. Um, I guess for me, like, I'm excited uh, easily for pretty much all the mainline stuff, like the movies, uh, some of the TV shows and the games, but mainly the movies and games. But at the same time, I'm apprehensive, anxious, and somewhat worried for the comics, which as much as I love the movies and the games and stuff, those only last me so long. Whereas the comics like will still be there every week for me. So uh, those are what I'm kind of more wanting to know about at this point. And I don't think I'll get my answer here. You could just be like me and say, screw the new comics and just reread some of the old ones. I'm rereading long Halloween right now. So (laughs) And it's still so good. It's dude, that book's amazing. I know, I love that book. Um, and it's Batman. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I'm part of the problem, guys. So I think uh, we'll wrap things up right there, and uh, we'll be back next week, uh, same time, same bat time, same bat channel, talking about the aftermath of fandom and what we liked, what we didn't like, and uh, yeah. So yeah. you, oh. you guys want to give a shout out to anything or? Yeah, go ahead and give your shout out, Comron. Tell them where you come from. Yes, yeah, so James and I are from Sutra Side Talk, which is a weekly podcast where we talk about uh, gaming, movie, and TV news. Usually select stuff that we actually can go in depth on, as well as uh, what we played and watched. Uh, you can check us out on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and also follow us at uh, Sutra Side Talk either on Twitter or Instagram, which uh, for DC Fandom, I will say, uh, we are going to be doing a live Instagram uh, reactions, I guess, alongside in collaboration with Apollo City Comics Podcast. So keep an eye out for that on Saturday during Fandom. Uh, no exact time yet, though. Yeah. Brandon? Uh, always stay tuned for D3 Media. And uh, let's, give a, let's give a little shout out that Danny is expanding and actually going on to other podcast formats right Danny yes I um just finally got my life together no I didn't (laughs) I don't no let's not kid ourselves here but I uh moved uh some of my podcast episodes onto Podbean so they're on Podbean and I just got approved for uh Apple Podcasts and I'm waiting to hear back from Google and eventually uh uh, we'll be moving on to Spotify and I'll have the rest of the episodes uploaded. So if you look me up, I only have three episodes up right now, but uh, we are going to be moving on there in the future. And we have some big plans for D3 media in the coming year. So hopefully we uh, get those rolling as soon as possible. And 
we're going to be focusing mainly on the podcast on this channel right now, but we will have more videos coming in the next uh, five months, I'd say. Yeah. And let's also give a shout out to a uh, Apollo city comics podcast. Oh yes. Find. Go check out Apollo city comics. Yes. You could, where my other half is at. And uh, you could check out more crossovers with Sutro and D3. And uh, we're going to be covering stuff on fandom as well between everyone. So Show go watch that everywhere. Batman and Robin review. <laughs> go watch commentary. that Batman and Robin commentary. Yeah, it's we also got commentary. a dark bat returns part one and two commentaries. I know as well. Oh yes. Oh, boy. Uh, Lots of stuff coming, but thank you, everybody. Yeah, thanks for listening, guys. Take care. Thanks for listening. Have a good one.